大家好 ，I'm Nathan Rich, aka 火锅大王 COVID-19. Yes, it's the same disease we've all been bothered by for nearly two years now. In the beginning, anti-China activists slammed nearly everything China did as human rights violations: locking down Wuhan, locking down communities, imposing quarantines on people. Even if they didn't want to be quarantined, and indeed those were often counter to the individualistic human rights constructs of some other countries. But what those activists didn't make clear is China's view on human rights essentially boils down to the good of the people is more important than the good of individual persons. And beyond that, the most basic human right in China is the right to life. But some people don't want you to think about that. Just remember, China bad. Facts not important. Later in the pandemic, we saw countless millions die in countries across the world who valued the right to not wear a mask more than the right of people not to die. Meanwhile, in China, we honestly don't even think about COVID-19 very much these days because, statistically speaking, we don't have it. We still take reasonable precaution, and the authorities still have their epidemic prevention infrastructure in place. But honestly, what China did worked. It was a trade-off of some people's individual liberties for a massive, overwhelming amount of people's right to live. As organizations like the CDC repeatedly told citizens not to wear masks, month after month after month after month, the piles of bodies overwhelmed the hospitals. The right to life is not a basic right in the U.S. It seems. At least, it's not as fundamental as the right to complain and wander around infecting everybody. But speaking of facts not being important, several reports are suddenly popping up all over the internet, all simultaneously ignoring facts to start the COVID-19 blame game again. And hapless morons across the world will no doubt come right back to the same conspiracy theory yet again. And who are we blaming today against the factual reality of the universe? Take a wild guess. CNN Politics. It's the most trusted source of political news in all of CNN's headquarters. CNN and other internationally right-wing media, like the New York Post, are reporting the biggest news in COVID-19's history. Three Wuhan lab researchers were hospitalized in November 2019, and new information on Wuhan researchers' illness furthers debate on pandemic origins. That's right. Apparently, three lab researchers were hospitalized in November of 2019, according to rock-solid sources, and that definitely means China leaked COVID-19. Probably, as spread widely by conspiracy theorist channel Valuetainment, China released it on purpose because. Something having to do with the trade war. Check out my video debunking that insane conspiracy theory when you're done watching this one. Now I know this is a wildly unpopular thing to do these days, but let's actually read what these articles say and compare them to established scientific facts, shall we? When I searched for this, I found the three top stories about it. Let's take a look. The Wall Street Journal article says multiple times that three doctors got sick in November 2019. It later says this little gem of propaganda. Though the first known case was December 8th, several analyses of the virus's rate of mutation concluded that it likely began spreading several weeks earlier. See, the timeline adds up. The first known case was in December, which means that person was infected in mid-November, and that's when these people allegedly got sick. China, we've got you now. These people were all patient zero. Thanks, everybody. See. Oh well. I do have a couple more minutes. Let's just do the stupid thing news agencies used to do called research. Let's see here. Marian Koopmans, a Dutch virologist on that team, told NBC News in March that some staff did fall sick in the autumn of 2019, but she attributed that to regular seasonal sickness. Regular seasonal sickness in November during flu season. Okay, well I guess that's plausible, but I really want to believe this conspiracy theory. Let's dig more. These people were all hospitalized, according to the New York Post. Hospitalized, and the definition of hospitalized is placed in a hospital for treatment, care, or observation. Going to the hospital yourself is not ever called hospitalized. To call it that would be intentionally misleading, but they wouldn't do that, right? So let's read about who hospitalized them. Probably some henchmen or a gang of thugs. Three researchers went to the hospital. Wait, so three people went to the hospital? They weren't hospitalized. If you've seen my video debunking the New York Times video about Chinese healthcare, 
or if you're Chinese, or if you've been to China for longer than five minutes, you'll already know that just as I said in that video two years ago, one of those ways that Chinese people are different than Americans is that they go to the hospital for what you would consider to be damn near everything. Stubbed toe, a little cut, a cold. Hell, sometimes I think they go to the doctor just to have someone to talk to. They go all the time. Okay, but wait. This article is clearly implying that they have evidence of COVID-19. So let's read the actual evidence. It's a U.S. intelligence report that says three people were sick, quote, with symptoms consistent with both COVID-19. Oh my God, it is. Symptoms consistent with both COVID-19 and common seasonal illness. Uh, wait, so the evidence is a foreign employee said basically, yeah, it just seemed to be the flu to me. And the intelligence report also says it could have just been the flu. Meanwhile, the lab director said the lab was not aware of any such illness, which is sourced only from an unpublished source. Wow, this is definitely worthy of dozens of news agencies reporting across the globe about it. Okay, guys, I know that so far the evidence is pretty weak, but bear with me here. Forget this annoying concept of evidentiary standards. CNN did. So can we. Let's just take their word for it. Let's strongman their argument. Steel man it. These researchers all had COVID-19. I'm just going to declare that straight away. They had it. They were the first ones in China infected with COVID-19. Yep, November 2019. Hell, let's go even further to support this theory. They were infected two weeks before, making it between October 15th and November 15th, 2019. That was the first case in China, according to this super strong evidence. Yes, that's overlapping with the Wuhan military games, the international event in Wuhan. But don't think about that. Remove that fact from your brain. And, uh, hang on here. I'm looking around these articles trying to find something. When was the first case in the United States again? Weird. They don't say when the first known factual case of COVID-19 was in the United States. Remember though, China's first confirmed case was December 8th, 2019. By their logic and supreme evidence, the real first case was during the Wuhan military games. Or, sorry, I told you to forget that. It was during the second half of October at earliest. So again, when was the first case in the United States again? It was confirmed by antigen testing, not just rumored by an unknown unpublished source. Oh, that's right. Now I remember. I've done now two videos already going over this. The first case in the United States of America was in August 2019. That's two full months before the earliest time these could have been infected. And that's not according to me, that's according to the United States government and science. Now, we know that mainstream media isn't lying to us or misleading us, that's just obvious. Which means there's only one explanation left. That's right, this is what actually happened. The first known cases verified with antigens in the entire world were in the middle of August 2019 in the United States of America. Three months later, three people got sick in China. That is alleged based on an unpublished mysterious report, but let's just assume that it's a fact. Then they went to the hospital just like 99% of all Chinese people do when they get sick. And because we know for a fact that this story is true, that means these three people actually had COVID-19. They were the first ones. They went to the hospital, then infected hospital workers there. No one at the hospital at all detected anything strange in their illnesses for two months straight. But then the virus had spread so far and wide that it managed to reach the enormous black hole at the center of the universe. Then, warping time and space, the viruses traveled back to Earth, arriving in the United States in August, months before they left. They time traveled into the past and began infecting the US. Then, in our newly created parallel universe, the one in which we all live now, the US had over 4.5 million COVID-19 cases, while China had, in the wildest, least charitable estimation possible, including undetected and asymptomatic cases, less than 100,000. I mean, I knew COVID-19 was bad, but I didn't realize it was literally time traveling. And there you have it. U.S. intelligence-backed definitive proof. COVID-19 travels through time, infecting previous versions of ourselves in new parallel universes. Either that or this report is intentionally hiding the well-established facts from you in an effort to continue to shift the blame towards China. Which of these seems more likely to you? For me, definitely the time-traveling viruses. 
I mean, isn't that what Chinese 5G towers are, really? Time travel pods for COVID-19? It all makes perfect sense. Well, until next time, I'm Nathan Rich. Special thanks to CNN, the comedy news network, for making me laugh. It's always good to see a parody account propagating conspiracies. Until next time, thanks everybody. See ya.